if you look at the, the, the disputes, not only to Japan and South Korea, but also the world's two largest economies, China and the United States in the Asia Pacific region, that raised uncertainty in the region. Japan is the world's third largest economy, while South Korea is the world's 11th biggest. The exchange of trade blows among them doesn't help, certainly, matters. So let's go to our panelists for some real answers. How bumpy is the road ahead for South Korea and Japan relations? In Boston, we have Myung Koo Kang, a professor of political science at Baruch College. In Tokyo, we invited Takuji Okubo, who is the chief economist of Japan Micro Advisors. Last but not least, in our Beijing studio, Rong Ying, vice president of CIIS, the China Institute of International Studies. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. I understand this is going to be a gentleman's discussion, so it's very happy to have both Japan sure. and South Korea, as well as from China, the three gentlemen with me right now. Let me ask you, our professor, Mr. Kang, uh, about your opinion first. What does it mean if the situation continues for South Korea, the tension between South Korea and Japan? If the current you know, tension and conflict goes on, definitely it's not good for everyone. It's mutually damaging and mutually losing game. But unfortunately, uh, the current conflict between South Korea and Japan will last probably a little bit longer than most people expect. And right now, uh, our administration's you know, retaliatory measure probably last until the Abe administration lasts until September 2021. If that's the case, I think the current ongoing process would be really horrible, not only for those two, these two countries, but entire Asia and the global so-called you know, value chain aspect. As you pointed out, you know, this you know, increasing uncertainty has immediate you know, impact of our own stakeholders, investment stakeholders. And then if you look at the you know, stock market and financial market in Asia, Mm. Uh, today, it was really horrible because it has really negative impact about, you know, all, all, you know a, a coming mm. some uncertainty in the financial market. All right. Professor Okubo, also your view here. What about the, for Japan? Now, of course, uh, Japan was the one seems to be uh, taken action at the very beginning during this round, at least. But uh, what's going to be the impact for Japan economically even? So Japanese government stance is that this is this will only have a temporary uh, effect. Uh, Jap Japan Japanese government position is that the Japan is uh, just uh, um, removing South Korea from uh, preferential treatment to the normal treatment, which uh, which which is uh, applied to most other Asian nations such as Taiwan. So from Japanese gov government's point of view, this is uh, this is a temporary measure. It shouldn't have this uh, removing South Korea from the white list, this measure itself shouldn't have a long lasting impact. Even though countries and regions in Asia are mainly not necessarily on that so-called favorable list, but still understanding Japan and South Korea are allies of the United States. And as a result, there were reasons originally why they put each other on each other's white list. So exactly, what does it mean? Uh, Professor Kang, uh, from your perspective, uh, South Korea, as we understand, the, the chips are mainly imported from Japan. Would that mean South Korea have to divert its um, sources to look for different possibilities worldwide? Right, right. I think from a short-term point of view, it can, it can be real pain to the South Korean economy and then to the South Korean people. But from a longer term point of view, I think the current ongoing conflict with Japan can be a disguised blessing. So it can be a long term you know, gain for the Korean economy and the people. And I personally disagree with the commentator from the Japanese side because he highlighted it's just a temporary measure but uh, the Japanese you know, government retaliatory measure right now is not just the economic retaliation. It, it touches upon the very important historical issue. 
you know, Japanese colonial rule and illegal activity of you know, enforced labor and compensation issue, mm -hmm. whether individual level compensation has been resolved or not. So from the South Korean people's point of view, the ongoing conflict is not just temporary, it's really long lasting and it's very serious issue. I think we should take into account right. such kind of aspect quite seriously. Okay, uh, Mr. Yeah. Okubo, you heard in your South Korean counterpart's argument. Now, if it really lasts until <laughs> the end of the term of the Abe administration, that's gonna be quite still some time to go. One could imagine the cooling up relationship between the two countries going mm -hmm. spiraling down in a way. Mm -hmm. So, well, um, Professor Khan is correct in a sense that the Japan and South Korea share a lot of a common interests. Uh, um, they are certainly allies, both in economic and military terms, uh, especially with U.S. So deterioration uh, in between the relationship between Japan and South Korea is definitely uh, not positive. Uh, I mean, how significant uh, is is uh, is debatable. It is definitely negative. However, um, you know, Japanese government's point of view is, well, Japan is not the only uh, country to be blamed. I think Japanese government's uh, um, uh, argument or complaint is that the Japan uh, no, or South Korea seems to be kind of siding, uh, sidelining Japan when it comes to uh, negotiation uh, with uh, South, uh, North Korea. So, and then there are, and from Japanese government's point of view, uh, current South uh, Korea governments are taking measures that could actually um, radicalize um, you know anti-japan sentiment within South Korea so there are there are issues uh, there are a number of issues Japanese government is uh, not very happy about uh, uh, with South South, right. uh, South Korean government and I guess that from Japanese government point of view this is kind of a message to that government well I guess not happy is one thing uh, doing extra steps when it comes to trade which is the fundamental link between the two countries is another thing. We are not here to judge which side is right, which side is wrong. We are only here to let others hear what are different voices coming from different sides. If you look at the integrated circuits, that is South Korea's top valuable exports last year, worth nearly $110 billion. Other electronic goods such as mobile phones, LCDs, and computer parts also make up the bulk of South Korea's most valuable exports. For Japan, integrated service exports are the third most valuable last year to the to tune of uh, $28 billion with semiconductor machinery worth nearly $25 billion next in the list. So you can see it's going to be quite some impact for both economy with no exaggeration. <laughs> We have a Chinese guest mm -hmm. sitting in the studio. Mr. Rong, been attentively listening to your two uh, Northeast Asian colleagues from South Korea and Japan. Now, China is not here to judge, but what do you make of the trade impact of the region? Well, indeed, I think China does not want to see that kind of trade dispute that is ha ha happening um, between uh, uh, South Korea and Japan. After all, I think uh, uh, for China, uh, both uh, Japan and South Korea are very important neighbors and are also trading China, partners. Absolutely. And we have chi we call CJK China, uh, Japan and South Korea uh, I mean, uh, cooperation and uh, working on the free trade negotiations and so forth. Is it uh, still possible given the um, Certainly, I think there are a lot of difficulties uh, given the current tension and uh, the uncertainties that are out of that. And besides, uh, going beyond the CJK, there are also China, so-called 10 plus 3, mm. and East Asia economic cooperation and beyond. So China does not want to see that happen, mm. having has, I mean, an ongoing trade dispute with the United States. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the question is, of course, uh, is not for China to judge, but China have to manage the, the, the impact of that. Uh, China is in the sort of supply chain or value chain. Mm -hmm. So I think China certainly does not want to see that happen and hope that the two countries would be able to work out of their problem, taking into account the complex uh, sort of uh, nature of the disputes right. involving history, involving legal, involving politics and economy. And I think more also equally important is a lot of emotions. 
certainly a lot of emotions, but we do not want to forget there are also a lot of trade issues going on. Uh, Professor Kang, go to you. Now we see Japan mm. and the United States, your Japanese counterpart will have something to say about that, I'm sure later, uh, has been working on their bilateral trade negotiations. Now, there were suggestions about, you right. know, Japan would be able to export cars to the United States while the White House will be able to wipe out the tariffs of three to six percent. That's what the president could do with his capacity. And now, and also, uh, U.S. can export uh, uh, beef to Japan. Obviously, there seems to be some bilateral trade deals going on in the background. So, what does South Korea has to offer so that Washington would also put its ears to the arguments of South Korea? Is that the real issue here? Uh, it's a tough thing, but uh, uh, it is. basically the U.S. you know Trump administration's approach is dealing with you know maximizing U.S. national interest by mm -hmm. dealing with uh, trade issues bilateral way, you know one by one. So U.S. economy scale and influence is much bigger than any other countries in the world. So dealing with China bilaterally, dealing with Japan bilateral way, and dealing with South Korea bilateral way. But one more important dimension is the security dimension. As you know, well, you know, United States is very important ally to uh, South Korea and very important security ally to Japan. So from American government point of view, maintaining trilateral, you know, alliance relationship between the United States and Japan and South Korea is very, very critical. But at the same time, in terms of dealing with, you know, trade or economic issue, United States always try to maintain in this kind of vertical bilateral negotiation strategy. Mm. In other words, US you know, government strategy toward Asia is uh, simply put is a kind of divide and conquer kind of rule. Mm. So for instance, as Chinese panelists pointed out, regional comprehensive economic partnership, you know, ASEAN 10 countries and China, Japan, Korea, mm. uh, 13 countries, you know, so intra-regional a multilateral trade regime will be good for Asian countries. But from the American you know, government point of view, Dividing these Asian countries multilateral right. you know, institution building is good for maximizing United States national interest. Well, so I think that that's the you know, ongoing you know, complicated game. It is a very complicated game. Well, our South Korean colleague is so, compli is so uh, sophisticated to understand that I'm sure our Japanese guest, who is also sophisticated, would understand that logic very well. So why would Japan allow Washington to divide and conquer, at least in the latest case, it seems. Well, um, Japan is not necessarily just following US lead. Uh, mm. Japan was uh, instrumental in uh, uh, managing to get the uh, TPP, which is now uh, CPTPP or yes. TPP 11 across the line. So US abandoned the trade agreement. Japan was managed to put the agreement through. So Japan, that, uh, Japan does continue to put emphasis on multilateral framework, and uh, Japan is also uh, positive to much wider Asian-wide agreement, RCEP. So um, I would say this Japan-South Korea trade tension is more of an exception rather than Japan's uh, trade policy. Mm. But on the other hand, Mr. Okubo, as we have noticed that this time, the Abe administration was trying to use the reasoning of so-called, quote, national security in this regard. Now, mm -hmm. there have been complaints mm -hmm. about the United States exaggerating the role of national security without really mm -hmm. uh, giving concrete reasoning as to what about national security. So a misuse mm -hmm. and too widely use of national security. Does, do people like you in Japan also worry about the spread of misuse of national security in future trade negotiations and relations, whether it's with South Korea or with mm -hmm. others? Um, I, I agree that uh, using trade, using security reasons for everything is definitely not the right uh, diplomatic strategy. So, and I personally, so I have been explaining Japanese government's position, but my personal view is that, uh, yes, the Japanese government did uh, um, overstep uh, or being too forceful 
in that taking this retaliation or counter uh, countermeasure to uh, South Korea. Mm -hmm. But then, well, the message was that more or less that the Jap Japanese government just wanted to send some message to South Korea that uh, there, are, there are certain uh, elements uh, mm -hmm. of uh, conduct by South uh, Korean government. The Japanese government is unhappy, and Japan actually wants to do more to cooperate with South Korea. So this uh, retaliation is just uh, part of the negotiation. And therefore, I want to ask Ms. Rong as well, how do you see all of you have talked about the regional mechanisms? Uh, it's not just one, but rather several. So will trade disputes now overshadow all the discussions about the regional trade mechanism? It's not just this trade dispute, but trade dispute between China and the United States, uh, South Korea and Japan, probably more to go. Uh, are we going to be taken off our tracks here in this region by trade disputes. Indeed, I think the danger is there. I mean, if you look at the trade dispute, as talk, there are many dis uh, trade disputes, but uh, of course, a lot of them it is because of the United States has made a bad uh, president, as, you, as we as we know, it's yeah, the largest economy in the yeah. world, so right. that's why a lot of yeah. people also. And so, out. so trade disputes is there. Trade disputes is the, or the reality, but how to manage that's the right. disputes is very important. I think the uh, we have the rules, we have WTO, but uh, I, United States has made a bad uh, president by, I mean, uh, using the uh, the tariff, mm -hmm. using the, 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 the maximum pressure, things like that. This is something very bad. This is something and damaging the process of regional sort of integration right. and the regional uh, agreement. And more importantly, I think the we call the multilateral trading uh, system I with see. WTO at the same at the, at the core. Mr. Okubo, on that point, I want I want to come back to you again uh, because um, Japan has been very instrumental, as you mentioned, in the process of uh, working on CPTPP, which has been successful so far, um, and yeah. also be, as many see, a champion of free trade, particularly in recent years. Mm. Would the bilateral mm. trade dispute in the name of national security with South Korea in a way disdain Japan's utmost efforts over the years in this regard? Many worried about it. Yes, um, I do agree that uh, this uh, trade dispute uh, between Japan and South Korea, it does undermine Japan's position that the Japan is, uh, Japan's policy is uh, open and free trade. Mm -hmm. So it, it does hurt the Japan's diplomatic uh, stance in this regard. But uh, so I think uh, going, uh, going forward in the next, uh, say, six months, I think uh, Japan would probably want to climb down uh, smooth, gradually. I see. Uh, so try to quiet down this uh, trade dispute between Japan and South Korea. Mm. On the other hand, the Professor Kang, do you think South Korea is also ready when the neighbor uh, could cool down to a certain extent? Because it really takes two to tango in a way. And we all know how important the right. economy is in this region. So Professor Kang, uh, from South Korean perspective, what do you think about the immediate future? Six months, let's just say. Uh, the, I think that it will, it will disrupt ongoing, you know, multilateral uh, regional trade agreement. But at the same time, it will disrupt ongoing efforts to peace building efforts in Northeast Asia. So in That's that right. sense, for the coming six months, the current conflict will have you know negative impact but let me highlight one one important aspect mm. japan whatever the outcome you know out, out of this in you know, a conflict japan will lose its credibility as a leading nation in asia i mean that's a very important issue for instance going back to you know 1997 asian financial crisis japanese you know financial institutions withdrew money from asian market that was the fundamental cause of the asian financial crisis and when at that time, when you know uh, Korean banks asked for rollover of existing loans, Japanese financial institutions did not allow such kind of thing. Mm. Some similar measure uh, made by the Japanese government at the moment is a life-threatening measure to the Korean economy. I see. For instance, it's estimated the Korean uh, economic growth so, rate this year would go down at least one you know, percent of one percent of GDP. So it's a cutthroat 
you know, really life-threatening measure. It's not just normal measure from the Korean people's you know, point of view. I see. It's, you know, boxing, you know, it's a kind of hitting below the belt kind of measure. The so I think emotions. That, uh, whatever the outcome, of course, it's mutually damaging outcome, but it will ultimately, you know, negative impact about the, Japanese the emotions the are extremely as a high nation in Asia. From both sides, uh, Mr. Wrong, is there any capable mediator between the two countries, I mean, if you think about the trilateral relations, uh, South Korea, Japan, and the United States, do you think Washington is capable to do it this time now? I'm not sure whether Washington is capable or willing to From do that. Uh, for, first of all, I think uh, despite the fact that uh, it, I mean, the United States play a, a, not a very uh, uh, active role. It did it have tried. And the recent uh, attempt, of course, is uh, Secretary Pompeo and that at the was ASEAN meeting. ASEAN meeting. It was reported that he planned to have uh, two sets of bilateral meetings before mm -hmm. the trilateral. Unfortunately, it was turned down. And there are a lot of speculations of reason for that. One of the uh, explanation interpretation in the United States either because it's not able to exercise uh, that role right. or it does not feel ready to do that. But uh, either way, I think it, uh, it, it, it shows that the, 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 the conflict runs really deep. And I, I would like to echo that uh, our Koreans' uh, colleagues' view that for Japan, it might be a kind of a measure for retaliation to show that displeasure. While for the receiving side of North South Korea, I mm -hmm. think it's taken very seriously. But look at the statements, look at the news reports, look at the reactions of North South Korea reacting to that. I see. It is very much damaging. So I, as a as Chinese, I think really hope that uh, the, the relationship will not as bad go as that bad as that. Mm -hmm. So because we have a lot at stake, uh, gentlemen, Indeed. in this region. Uh, earlier, all of you talk about the geopolitics as well. It is not just geopolitics, but also a nuclear security in Northeast Asia too. That's going to mm -hmm. have a direct impact on all of us here in this region. Um, as we know, um, Mr. Okubo, there are there were earlier encouraging signs. For example, even the United States president walk across the 38th parallel, be able to in a way, mm -hmm. show his attitude. But many, of course, suggest it's more of a gesture and a showbiz rather than real uh, actions. Having said that, though, Mr. Okubo, mm -hmm. the, as we know, right. the tough right. relationship between South Korea and Japan will absolutely have an impact on the security in the region, particularly regarding the nuclear issue. Uh, Mr. Okubo, how do you see the complex entangled factors? Right. So the, the summit between uh, United States and North Korea after G20, I think it, it did help uh, in de-escalating attention. Um, the, the, only, uh, the problem is that uh, it's just uh, that the policy is just being made up by US President Trump alone. Mm -hmm. So there is no follow through. So in that regard, this uh, closer cooperation, uh, not just between the summit, but also among the bureaucrats, uh, Japanese uh, MOFA, Japanese foreign officials, um, South Korean officials, I think more government-wide efforts to an alliance with uh, when uh, US, South Korea, Japan, and China uh, negotiate with South, uh, North Korea, I think that is a very critical issue. Not just a summit, but uh, it has to be a wider efforts to deal with uh, and contain North Korea. Very interesting, because right now it seems that both sides in Pyongyang and Washington, they prefer bilateral rather than multilateral. Having said that, about the security issue, South Korea and the United States right now begin their joint military drills today after Pyongyang test fired a series of short range missiles in the past weeks. The drills will last for half a month and feature computer simulated command post exercises to cope with any emergency, as they say. Pyongyang has denounced the new exercises as a violation of achievements made during previous inter-Korean and Kim Trump summits. Instead of binding together against the DPRK's nuclear threat, the two American allies apparently are now locked in their own bitter trade battle with the US and apparent 
reluctant mediator or incapable mediator so far. So Professor Kang, it would not be right if I don't ask the South Korean opinion. From your perspective, will things escalate, particularly after the trade dispute? Will parties involved in the nuclear security issue feel emboldened by the worsening relationship between Japan and South Korea? Right, uh, right now, uh, South Korean co government, as far as I know, quite seriously thinking about, you know, canceling the military information sharing with the Japanese government. So based on the agreement, every uh, August each year automatically renew this inform military information sharing thing between the two governments. But the Korean government is quite serious about, you know, canceling as a countermeasure against the Japanese, you know, uh, this, uh, the, the, the national security mm -hmm. you know, excuse. So I think ongoing conflicts is really bad for building more stable and then uh, serious you know, discussions about the denuclearization or peace building efforts going on in Northeast Asia. Right. It's wrong, we have only less, about one minute left. Your thoughts about this, because you've been working very hard on the denuclearization uh, issue for many years too. Well, I think so far on the question of the denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula, the, uh, after the, uh, the several sort of summit round of summit meetings, uh, everything more or less is on the track. The only thing is, of course, the uh, working level talks between the United States and North Korea, hopefully mm -hmm. it would be uh, resumed soon. And then the uh, a practical roadmap will be uh, sort of uh, worked out so that to implement the agreements or consensus that have been reached. And, and support it. That has been always supporting and hoped by all the countries in the region, particularly China and South Korea and to some extent Japan. Rongying, Nyangku Kang, Kakuji, Obuko, thank you so much for all of you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. You're watching World Inside with me, Tianwei. Still to come on our program.